Uh, greetings everybody, greetings from Zimbabwe. We're here on a very dry and windy day. It's our winter and winter is notoriously dry and all the water holes are drying up. And right behind me is exactly that. This pond is just drying up and inside there are fish, tilapia, catfish, African mottled eels. And as it dries, so the predators come in, the storks, African fish eagles come in and uh, you have this remarkable pre-drying up feast. Some creatures will survive. They'll dig their way through the mud and they'll survive. Little lungfish or certain frogs, etc. Even some barbel, catfish, they might survive this. And as I look down here, as I'm talking to you, I got right there an African fish eagle feather. So the fish eagles have been here and it's easy to catch. In fact, from here I can see one or two one or two perished fish but what i want to tell you really is the most darling story and that is the story about uh, about this little couple these two little baby orphaned elephants that we got um, they lost their parents years and years ago these two little ellies they're about two and three years old wonderful bonded with each other they came from different mothers they bonded with each other and then bonded with us on our farm and with all the children and it was on a day just like this, windy, blustery, that, and hot in the middle of the day, by the way. They went down to have a little drink and a little play in the mud. Elephant babies are the most playful little babies. They went down to have a play, and when they'd finished, they found out that one was stuck. And oh my goodness, he was there for hours, squealing. <laughs> Yeah. We heard him at our house on top of the hill, squealing. We all jumped in the car, binoculars, what's there? There's a distressed sister to one side. Oh my little Gigi, to one side distressed. And there was boy stuck in the mud. Down we went in this very vehicle. That's called the Mavmobile. And the Mavmobile took the family everywhere. And in the Mavmobile, our signal for arriving is the Bermuda Bell, given to me by Fred King of the King Gallery in New York about a quarter of a century ago. Anyway, we go down there and try and calm the elephants down because very distressed, try and calm this little boy down and took a rope and went in and then touched him and he reached his trunk out of his little pink nostril out like this trying to sniff us in all of his panic splattered with mud and we eased drowned took the rope put it behind his buttocks made a cradle behind his buttocks meshed it up and then tried to pull him couldn't move him he was like he was just stuck in that thick thick african mud so we pulled him slowly in the mavmobile oh, oh, an inch at a time and popped out like a cork out of a bottle stopped there and we all went up rubbed him let him smell us let him get his confidence back the poor thing just wanted love and his little eyes were all mudded up cleaned his eyes washed his eyes with water put a little bit on his mouth he, he wanted to nuzzle everybody and his little sister came up, little Gigi, she came up and sniffed him. And there he was now in the shivery state. I think from shock more than the cold, although he was frozen. He was in the shivery state like this. And on his backside was a big, big lump of mud on his backside like this. And what did he do? Because it felt uncomfortable and heavy for him carrying it around like this. He lifted this foot up and kicked the mud. Boom. I thought, look at that, on three legs, this little thing, boom. It was such a memorable thing for me. Anyway, we got little, we got this little boy out the way was his name, little boy, and we took him out, warmed him up, cleaned him up, and then they went back to his little home where he got some fresh milk and was with his sister and had the comfort of a knife. But it left such an impression on me and on my head, in my brain, that I carved this little elephant, little round elephant, tiny pink little, 
translucent toes, three toes on the back foot, four toes on the front foot, little eyes, wet, with this wrinkled, fat little wrinkled backside, and I carved him with his foot up as I remembered him kicking that mud off. Just humorous, just the cutest little backside you ever saw. And he, this sculpture stayed on my desk three years. And one day, a little girl came in. She was wearing flip-flops. She had to be no older than four years old. And she got to my desk and she put her hands on my desk and she looked at this carving and she was looking at the back end of the carving. And she raised herself up in her flip-flops, the little pigtails sticking out like this. And she pointed at the other and she looked at me and she said, Zozo. I said, Zozo. She said, mm, Zozo. And that became his name. It became the name of the little elephant. We went down and saw Gigi's little brother, little boy, said, your new name is Zozo. You've just been renamed. And all the sculptures and carvings or whatever I did in the future and still do, still bear that name Zozo in respect and a tribute to this great elephant. And where's he now? He's a big Ellie bull. And he's gone. We translocated him to a place called the Ghana Rizal National Park in the low felt of our country. He was transported down there with his little sister and he merged. He was reintroduced to the wild and he's the happiest guy. He's got children. He's got wives. He is a happy, happy man down there and we're happy. And it was just one of the most beautiful, heartwarming stories that came out of Africa. For all my children, little Alexander Forbes, Patrick and Benjamin, all who helped push him out of the mud that day. He's just been so much part of our lives. So from Zimbabwe, from isolation, be patient. Be patient. Lots of love.